Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show, the number one comedy business podcast in the world. Woo! Pragmatic entrepreneurial advice with the real do dog don't talk. Do that. Don't do that. What Why? You, you don't like that doing? voice? What are you doing? Don't do that. Hey, we just won another award. What was it? Uh, business pod- or comedy podcast of the year from the Southern State Business Award. Ooh, you. Yeah, you wish you had that Southern State yeah. Award. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, your mom's Sony Walkman, that yellow one that is water resistant, but not waterproof. Yeah. Uh, plenty, plenty of today's occupations didn't exist a decade ago, like esports game coach or cryptocurrency analyst. From Etsy seller to podcast producer, new opportunities to build a career are popping up every day. And Squarespace is the unlimited tool for professionals to use to build a site, to market the brand, and sell anything. You want to uh, you want to get a little free trial going? Hit up the link in the description of this episode. It hooks us up, hooks you up. That's the Double Dutch Rudder 69 B to B community help we like to have with our listeners. So smooth the way you say it. If you don't have a uh, if you don't have a website, even if you're personal, if you're in corporate America, you should have one for your resume. Don't rely on LinkedIn to do the dirty work for you. And if you want to be our BFFs, subscribe to the pod, rate the show five star, and write a short review. Share it with a loved one or someone you don't love. It doesn't matter. Let's get it going. Ooh, yeah. Horny, dirty. Old sweat equity. <laughs>
I, it's gay, I know that, yeah. but I want to be gay. I wish I was, yeah. but you know, you know. <laughs> it's a different kind of place, man. And um, I used to laugh a lot about like the. Um, they used to have the funniest titles on the um, the porn theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. Because it would be like the, the most hysterical titles ever when you drive by. Like you drive by in one week, it'd be like, put it in, coach. <laughs> or just these like ridiculous titles. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a weird place, man. Hollywood, Hollywood's Hollywood. And, um, you know, there's, def- there's definitely accommodations that they want you to make. You know, the Harvey Weinstein thing. That's no joke. Like some of that's real. And, um, Do you know about that difficult- before it broke? Yeah, I mean, of course. There, there's so much going on in in, in Hollywood, and um, well, like I heard, you know, I heard about Cosby's thing like ten years before it really broke when Hannibal Burris talked about it on stage, and then that video went viral. I'd always heard it, but I'm so far, I'm so far down the the totem pole that it doesn't, you know. Well, I can, I've just heard it a bunch, but you know, it's one of those things that a lot of comics heard it, but they never. What was they going to do? I don't know. I mean, I, I enjoy, like, I loved my time there, but I didn't enjoy the process of, like, you're the right guy for the role. We're going to put you, we want you to do this role, but mm, the director wants to hang out with you. Joel Schumacher would like to hang out. Uh-oh. And you're like, He's probably pretty yeah. cool. What Talk he, about Batman. Four. Yeah, yeah, butchered, butchered you know? Batman. And I'm like, I'm like kind of naive, please. right? I'm, I'm like from the mid west and i'm like you know what do you mean hang out dude i'm like oh <laughs> i see i see so i don't know i mean i just didn't work for me that way because i just i like moralistically i come from a very different place and um you know it just didn't work so so i started making my my own films and, and i did um one a movie called iowa it was at tribeca and it was kind of cool man it was released in theaters and it was about like the crystal meth epidemic in in the midwest and then i did a horror movie that I made called The Orphan Killer. He doesn't kill orphans. He is an orphan that kills people. It's a slasher. And it, like, blew up, dude, like 10 million downloads online and just, like, went, like, viral about 12 years ago. And I think everybody and their mom pretty much just, um, you know, pirated the film that was into to slasher and horror. So pretty much everybody's seen that. And then since then, I, I had a crazy... Um, like life in terms of my, my breakup with my ex and just, um, dude, I, I, I just had a crazy time. Like I, I went, I went off the deep end about seven years ago and, um, just blew my life up big time. What? We like to hear crazy stories. Yeah. Yeah. uh... Wait, pause on that for a second. Put a pin Mm -hmm. in that. We we forgot. Well, we forget. No, we forgot to ask the question. We asked everybody the first time on the, on the show. Uh, this isn't the question, but I want. I'm curious. Did you listen to an episode of this before coming on? No. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> this, for your honesty. Cool. Uh, so the question we ask everybody when they come on the first time is, "What advice would you give your 13 year old self?" Uh, you want a cliche answer? Um, like uh, your mom knows about the magazines underneath the bathroom counter, underneath the towels, right? <laughs> Pretty it's, much. It could be practical like that. It could be it's, – it's your choice. You're in I a mean, t- yeah. Ted and, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure phone booth. You go back in time. You go right in front of you, and you come out and grab yourself by the lapels and go – because you're wearing a blazer, I imagine. And uh, you go your, like – Your Viking genetics should you, – you should never drink. Yeah. Well, that's, Don't that's drink. Probably bro. pretty good. That's probably pretty good. Yeah. I think that's the that's first time we've drink. heard that too. Yeah. Out of all the people, we probably and we, a lot more people probably should say it. Right. You you're just not that good at drinking. That's what I like to tell my my sober friends. I'm too good at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mean I'm awesome at it? <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's fast forward to. It sounds like to that's a, a major part of what you were just talking about. Kind of broke up with your girl. And you're kind of spiral spiraling, is that fair to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I had I was I was sober for a long time, but look, there's a difference between sober and emotionally sober. Like you can take away the chemical, but you're still not emotionally sober, right? Oh, yeah. When you're like a creative dude like me, I was doing I was like you know I'm playing these different roles and I'm auditioning for all this different stuff and I'm using alcohol to sort of mask all these feelings that I have. And, um, 
you know, it was cool. I, I met a woman, we had a relationship, we had kids, and I didn't drink for like 13 years. And when everything blew up, you know, I was, at a, I was shooting a movie, and I met this, met this bar, and um, they're just walking, 13 years, right? And they're just walking around offering shots to the crew, and I just grabbed one and just slammed it, tequila, just done. 13 years, just unconsciously grabbed it and started drinking. But things were on the decline with her at that time. But it got so bad so fast that I ended up flipping a car six times. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I, I broke my neck, my wingtip vertebrae. One inch to the left, I would have been paralyzed from the neck down. So, you know, here I am in this hospital bed, and I'm still not all there. I mean, I'm still being a baby. Um, I think I checked myself out the next day when I, against my, on my own recognizance against the hospital's wishes, and I was like, you know, Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off from here. I'm in this hospital gown. I get in this cab and they like, I go to this residence and I'm staying at. This is like where my life went to, right? And um, what did I do? I drank. Wow, right? I mean, huge cut of my head, blood everywhere. I mean, it was just a mess. Um, so I ended up having to go to rehab. And uh, that's kind of where they said, dude, you know, you're, you're a baby. Like, you need to wake up. Like, seriously, like, you, you need to have some humility. You're not the all-being, all-singing, dancing crap of the world. So let's get you, um, let's get your head straight. And I kind of got straightened out. And after a couple of years, I ended up with a career shift. And I had marketed my own films to the point they had, like, a million followers. So I was good at marketing. And so that's where I started segwayed into starting my own company and starting to do digital marketing. And, um, you know, obviously, I know video because I've shot movies. And so that's kind of how that all happened. And then... Oddly enough, I ended up as a corporate executive at Transamerica. Weird. That seems like a big jump. Yeah, yeah. That, that is. How, a, that, how, that, how, how? Weird, like the way life works. You never think, you never imagine that it's going to work the way it, it turns out. But what happened was, is I have a good friend in Knoxville, um, and he had a company called Tag Resources, which is a really great TPA. They're a third party administrator. So what they do is they. Um, are basically like the, they handle all the back end of a retirement plan. So they handle all the fiduciary responsibility, all that kind of stuff. And they needed marketing because their, their look wasn't, just wasn't there, man. They, they, you know, financial industry standards for creativity are not exactly soaring. Yeah. Right. So I started helping him and the company looked better. And eventually Transamerica came in. And, um, you know, was interested in us. We did a lot of channel marketing, too, and co-branding. And Transamerica came in, and they ended up buying Tag Resources. And in the process, offered me the position of the director of digital experience, Transamerica. Well, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. uh, take this bottle of tea. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, a, that was not we don't, cool. It's not normally our decoration. Uh, it's just yeah, a I just wanted to have a sad, happy Dude, I don't mind it. Well, yeah, you don't hang out with a lot of uh, sober people. They don't care most of the time. It's not like they're like uh, a lot of the yeah, time. He I can't mean, reach through it's Zoom. A wee bit in his face. That's all. Just um, a wee bit. <laughs> I was just trying to make a, a penis kind of sculpture out of the two uh, <laughs> uh, Tito's nah, bottle nah, in between with the Canada Dry <laughs> Zero Sugar yeah, Ginger like Ale Lemonade. Everything. Right. Yeah. We're a penis heavy show. Pretty good. Um, Pretty good. That's Our great, man. South South Park it up, bro. In the last episode, what was that? Dick and balls. The um, yeah, yeah, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the but uh, I mean, our logo is a tie dick. It's a dick that's a tie. Eric uh, should get credit for that. He my best fantastic. work. He had an aha moment. You know when creativity hits you. Yeah, the right way. <laughs> um, hey, I love creativity in any form. Well, I I want to kind of uh, I want to go back to like. I'm always interested in the setbacks people have and how they got out of it. So like, uh, you had a career change. Um, you know, how did you kind of cope with that? How did you kind of, I always like to know like, all right, what was the routine to get into this, this second career? Was it fight kicking and fight screaming? Was it, I don't know. I have these skills, but I don't know kind of thing. Cause there's a lot of that going on nowadays. Um, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to lead yeah. the question too much. It was. It was all humility. You know, it was all like taking what came my way 
you know, and being like, okay, you know, they're going to bring that out of the blue. They were like, do you want to just make some changes to this website where you're going to do changing up? We're doing co-branding. We're going to, we're co-branding with our clients. Do you want to just change the colors on this and change the logo and change the, um, the name of the company that we're co-branding with? And I was like, oh man, you know, this is like, I, you, nothing was beneath me at that point. Right. And so I just started doing it. And then as I saw what they were doing, I started seeing how it could be improved. And then as I saw how it could be improved, I would present to them my concepts of how I think that they could improve it with different technologies that I understood. So that, that's how that sort of segued. And then I realized I kind of enjoyed it, you know, and um, life is about hard work and not everything comes easily and do the work, you know. And I was so used to this sort of luxurious life where you get paid X amount to be on a TV show and all this, you know, this easy sort of lifestyle where you show up, you say your lines, you get paid a lot of money. Um, but you got to be and picked. And I had to relearn. Yeah. <laughs> you got to wait Dude. to be picked, right, for that. That's what sucks about that industry. Like, people are like, yeah. when I was out in LA, and I was like, I just want to do stand up. But they're like, you should go for this commercial audition. I got a friend that's going to. They'll put you and I can't fucking read out loud. Number one, and number two, yeah. uh, this show has proven that almost every episode, almost every episode. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm I'm dyslexic of some sort, but uh, you know that thing of waiting to be picked, right? This happens in corporate America too, and it it's not a great. I, I don't know. I don't think it's the best strategy to be wait around to be picked. It sounds like not to be happy. Well. But but you can't. There's you can do as much as you want to do to get that role, but it's kind of limiting. And at a certain point, especially with acting, yeah, it's not sports. You can't go out and score thirty a game and then be like, "I'm the best." Obviously, look at the scoreboard. Yeah, it's, board. A, it's, it's not like, a meritocracy. Yeah, like there's that. no. It's politics. And so, like, and, politics, and yeah. I, I a lot of actors when you're doing auditions, they like they know who they want before you walked in. You know, like they know the look they're looking for. And so, and it's, and a lot of the time, even if you crush it in there, someone else might be on hold that they, they're trying to negotiate. And so you might be the, yeah. like the best one and then you go, okay, but we're waiting for this, you know, Seth Green <laughs> yeah. to see if we it can sign to me. Him. I mean, there are multiple roles where I would get the call and say, you're the best actor. Sorry, we got to hire Devin Sawa. We got to hire Hayden Christensen. We got to hire this person, but we really wanted to hire you, but they've got, the resume, they did a couple of things before you did that are a little bit bigger, so we're going to go with them. Right. I mean, it happens often, and a lot of times they're already picked out, and they'll say, hey, you're the best actor for it. I mean, I think if I had hung in there, I would have broken through because I was just so close on so many big things that something was going to happen, you know? But um, That's hope. You know, the way right? it turned out, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's hanging in there, right? Like, well, how if you don't have that hope, what do you have? I mean, then it's just... Yeah. Then it's depressing. And, <clears throat> Obama. Hope. I had a lot of good. I had a lot of a lot of good opportunities, you know. And I think that I was real close. But I'm I'm not regretful. I'm pretty happy with my life right now. I have great family, uh, great kids, great wife. You know, I mean, nice house. I, I'm 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 blessed, man. Seriously. So um, fame is not all it's cracked up to be. I can tell you that. Yeah. Do you still have that itch to act and stuff, write stuff. Do you do anything like that still? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm writing a, a, a drama uh, right now, a crime, crime drama that's a period piece. I've been doing it for, I can't, like, sometimes, like, it'll be like five years, nothing will come to me. And then uh, just a lightning strike will happen, and I'll be, oh, I want to write that. And, and I'll go, and I'll, I'll start writing it, and then I'm up at 4 o'clock in the morning, like, writing for three hours before I even work. And um, this is one of those moments. And I do have still have connections to um, a lot of people. In Hollywood, I mean, I had my agent was at, at uh, William Morris, and then he moved over to CAA, and um, I have uh, a lot of people that I know there that are at high levels, and and some some people at the, the medium levels. I think really, honestly, the level that really gets things done is not that high end level. Once you get to that level, nothing happens. Like you, it's really the real middle 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 range working area where people really get the jobs, and they're out there hustling for you, and the agents are working for you, and so. I've got connections to that level, and um, I plan to take this movie out and get it made. Nice, that's awesome. You'll have to keep us updated mm -hmm. on that. Uh, I and For I, sure. I definitely think we'll have to have you back on because I feel like there's a lot uh, to 
to go uh, to talk to you about. Um, you know, sure. are, are you mm-hmm. so you're going to make it independent out of this? I want to re- really. I want to ask. I think creative process is really interesting. It sounds like you do lightning in a bottle method. You know, it comes to you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like shut everything down. I got to write this down. I got to get this out. It, do you have? A, I will walk away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, anything I'm doing? Other than lightning in a bottle, because that doesn't stop, really. You can have as whatever process you have to, for creative, but um, mm-hmm. you know that that'll happen no matter what. That you have to like, mm-hmm. I have to like walk away and be like, uh, let me record this real quick. This this bad dick joke. Yep. I had an idea for a movie the mm-hmm. other day. Tell me anything about that. So there's he's going to pick you. One white rhino alive in the world, and there's a guy that's designated to like guard him until the thing dies. Just a movie about this guy and this rhino where, you know, they, he doesn't want to do it. You know, the first scene, he's in the military and he sucks at something. And they're like, you're on rhino duty. And he's like, this is bullshit. And he has to go out there and guard this rhino. And, of course, they start to like each other. What country is this in? Somewhere in Africa, obviously. No, that, that'll work. I, that'll work. But you, but you have to arc the story. So the rhino is going to be shipped from one place to another place. I do want to be on and rhino And then he duty. has a job. The rhino yeah, <laughs> then he has to guard it as it's transported. And as it's transported, it's attacked multiple different times right. by multiple different enemies, right? The rhino so saves his life, that. maybe, at some point. So there we, you go. We, we're established that emotional connection. I think we've both been nerding out about storytelling since we had John Livesey on uh, right. like two months ago. Because he really broke down mm-hmm. storytelling in a branding kind of messaging way, which uh, uh-huh. or like even a sales pitch, uh, whatever uh, you're doing a deck, you should tell stories, right? Absolutely. Especially mm-hmm. in presentations. Uh, you know, I want to ask you about that. But creative process? Do you have a process? Like here, here's how. If I'm on my game, here's what I do. Well, I think that. Really, a lot of what I do is make sure I never miss the moments that the moments of clarity that come to me. Look, our minds have to be at some point in time to get really creative, you know, sort of clear of any kind of interference. And I think children do it best. Oh. Like kids have the best minds possible for creativity. They just have nothing that has already interfered with their their antennas that can receive all these creative you know, um, lightning strikes that come, but I would say at night, you know, when I go to sleep, I have a notepad near my bed and I, I know it's hard to wake up, but, and write stuff down, but I have come up with some of my best ideas, you know, sleeping and, um, I'll wake up from a dream or in a state of, um, you know, sort of half, half ass asleep and I'll just get up and I'll start writing, you know, and I'll go into the bathroom and I'll write it down or I'll record what I was thinking. And I, I know that throughout in history, there have been some of the, the, the best songs, the greatest musicians, and the greatest lyrics of all time have been written this way. And um, that's kind of one of the processes that I do. And then organizationally, lately I've actually been leaning on, um, on chat GPT for some organizational structure. I want to ask to you like, about that too, yeah. Um, yeah. So like um, putting structure to the thoughts, right? You, you gotta, mm-hmm. You've got like... I got all this, I need to get all this in there, but I need it f- formulated, which a lot of writers writing teams, one guy's that, and one guy's more of the chat GPT a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, the structure of everything, that's what it helps mm-hmm. you with? Uh, the- yeah, I would say, like, especially from a business standpoint, you know, if we're talking business here, my mind doesn't go as creative into organizing the bullet points of how I'm going to you know, get my messaging across in a business plan, whereas ChatGPT can help me with that, and then I take that, analyze it, and then I'll restructure it, reorganize yeah, it, the, rewrite it how I want to write it. But, and the notepad next to the bed, it, it's it's great, right? It's tough, man. <laughs> but no, it's great, but you you have to get out of the, the habit of going, I'll remember this, and not right. not going leaning over to write Dude, it. That's fucking, I was going to say, just training yourself to actually wake up. And do it yeah. is hard. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wake up like that still. Like, I'll wake up, you know, probably half the nights in the middle of the night. I won't be, mm-hmm. have creative ideas, but I'll sometimes I do. And I'm like, ah, fuck, I got to write this down. Mm. Yep. And, and it, then you forget it in the morning if you don't. I right. always forget it. Oh, no, my memory is fucking horrendous. So I write down Me almost too. everything, like, religiously. Yeah. And so uh, 49% better 
memorized if you write it down. Ooh, more made from, up statistics. From the corrections uh, <laughs> department. Uh, on another episode, I said it was 29, and I looked it up as 49. Next time it'll be 53. Well, you know, whatever, man. Maybe we're all taking ginkgo biloba. Um, but it's one of those things that uh, lightning in a bottle is, is very interesting, and using AI is very interesting. Um, you know, how, how have you kind of done that? I, I want to ask you about marketing, but also the creative side. Because sure. creatively, I think it'll help. I, I think it helps form structure for real creatives. Like, you're a real creative. Uh, we, I think we can gather that. Like, there's, a, yeah. by the way, I don't like being called a creative by people because I do. They think I'm like, you think you're flaky. They think I'm, I, I think it's a pejorative in the business world a lot of the time, mm-hmm. unless you're probably where you're at, it's a little different because you're brought in as the creative. But I'm, I'm coming in trying to be a fractional CMO for someone, and they're like, "Don't listen to him; he's creative." I'm like, "No, I'm. A, it's math to me. A lot of marketing's math, and then like, yeah. a lot of creative is creative is iterative in my head, right? Uh, I'm not going to make anything from whole cloth, but I can get that creative done. But I just I hate a lot of creatives in the in the working world because they are flaky. They are like, yeah. Uh, sensitive to due dates. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, like... Yeah. The, more, the pressure. I can't work with this pressure. If you give me a date to have it done, I, you know, it just ruins the process. Uh, oh, oh, dude, I've had yeah. conversations where I go, you can't tell me I don't understand the creative process for people. I'm a fucking comic. You can get it done if you fucking sit down yeah. and make yourself I do, do it. do it on stage in front of people I'm creating. I, just, I don't prepare at all. <laughs> well, I still go and do it, right? right. Exactly. Um, but it's like, about it. but you can overthink all you want about doing the task, or you can just start doing it, mm-hmm. right? So, like, while I'm trying to hire you as a creative to do it, don't give me this bullshit that you know I'm not empathetic or understand it. You you have to sometimes sit down with nothing on in a in a blank room and just do it. That's like I saw yeah. Tommy yeah. We, we saw the guy who made that shitty movie. Um, the room what was it the room? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody on Twitter was like, "Tommy, do you have any advice for uh, oh, starting up dude, my yeah, my billboards film? up?" And he just wrote I know that start. Movie. He was at the limo. Yeah. yeah. So he had billboards up all over. You know how he made that successful? He, that was marketing. He put billboards up all over Sunset Boulevard, Highland, and La Brea, and he just marketed the shit out of that movie, and it became this like cult. You know, phenomenon. I know Greg Limley over there who runs the Limley Theaters, and you can get the movie in there. You can four wall it. So what he did is he four walled the movie, which means you pay a fee to get the movie in the theater. And so whoever was bankrolling him was allowing him to make that a quote classic. But I seriously doubt that movie was making a lot of money. Yeah, There's it seemed no like that guy had a weird uh, <laughs> financial backer somewhere. Like he like I like how yeah. you brought up an example of the guy that's. Void of creative, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> to no, give good advice. My point was, the he, advice is good. No, somebody asked his advice: How do you start making films? And all he wrote was, "Start." Yeah, yeah. Period. Start. My uncle was a director and taught it uh, over in uh, U- University of Texas, Fort Worth, and like that was his thing. Just go, go in there and get dirty. Like, yeah. go, just go. Stop overthinking it. You know. Now, especially, I guess, because we all have these phones that have 4K capability. I mean, you could technically do that. Um, is it going to be wildly successful? I don't know. I mean, you know, some of the weirdest ideas and some of the things that seem like accidents sometimes end up being the greatest creative, you know, creative pieces that, that we work on. I mean, I think that commerce and creativity are really where I've had success in merging those two together, just the creativity with the business. And because I was raised by a businessman, my dad was a salesman. He worked for IBM. He worked for Microsoft. He was very successful, really smart guy. And so I learned a lot from him, right? That's and huge. I think because he, he's yeah. a different echelon of salesman. That's that's uh, especially back then. That those like I'm, I'm guessing IBM 80s, Microsoft 90s, right? Yeah, he was he was with Bill Gates, and he would he went with Bill Gates. He would meet with Bill, and he was in with all those guys. And you know, he just was a he's a really smart guy, and so he taught me how to, you know, how to work hard, hard ethic, hard work ethic. Huge. It was difficult for me because I was creative, but he taught me how to structure, 
you know, sales, how to structure a business plan. And so I think that really benefited me on, on this side of the, on this side of things, you know? So, yeah. So part of your process is be present around, you know, around the kids, around the free time. Right. I, I've had to figure that Absolutely. out as well. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. you got to let your brain breathe. The reason you're getting the, the, the ideas in the middle of the night is why shower thoughts is the best Reddit subreddit. Yeah, you finally don't have anything else to do. Yeah. Your brain is turned off. There's, you can't look at your phone. That's like the only place people don't look at their phone now in the right. shower. Um, but it's like the reason you get these, uh, kind of, uh, left of center thoughts for yourself is because you're let, letting your brain kind of breathe and not have to f- work on anything at the time. Yeah, it's all input. And then it's like, Oh, I don't have anything to do. Maybe I'll do some output. I get the best ideas working out a lot of the time because it, I, I can't th- really, it, my mind goes blank for a little bit and then back it, it, it gets it all going. <laughs> oh yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I have a book that I think is one of the greatest books. I don't know where it's at. It's somewhere under. But I think I've read in terms of creativity. It's by Rick Rubin. Yeah. I've heard, I've, I've heard a lot about – I've actually heard a lot of people talking about this Rick Rubin book. The Creative Act? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, he, I'm tell, I mean, he just basically sums up who I am in the, throughout – I mean, every word he says is like, oh, that, okay, I get it. I mean, I just, I just get it. I think you would too. You'd be like, oh. It makes, and he talks about processes that you can try, you know, that, that might be valuable to you. Um, and so I've been trying to implement, you know, some of those, you know, practices even at Transamerica and, and you know, sort of reverse engineering some of, the, some of the way we think about, you know, do we need to have a structured script before we record this interview with this sales rep that talks about, you know, how fiduciary responsibility works and the best practices for selling that to an advisor. And I'm like, let's not script it. You've been doing this for how long? Yeah. yeah. Um, 10 that. years. You know what I mean? Just get in there and just do it, bro. Just, just, I'm going to roll. I'm going to make you look amazing. You talk. Don't worry about it. I want you to pitch it to me like you're pitching an advisor. Don't yeah. do a script. Yeah, that looks way more yeah. genuine, too, because people who aren't used to acting or being on camera, if they are told that you have to say this the certain way, that'll get in their head, and you're better off just being like, do your thing. Do your, just do it like any other day, and then that's when the magic happens. Uh, yeah, and it sounds like you're very adaptable. That last kind of uh, story was really on the spot, I'm, I'm assuming, but... Um, it seems like you're, you're kind of adaptable to the situation. So previously kind of reactive and now proactive. Tell us about AI and the creative process or anything kind of with marketing, really. Yeah, I, yeah. I just found it out you, just can, you can have it write custom code for you, which I was like. I think, where, yeah, you, you can. And, and now there's, they just, plugins are just popping up on chat GPT. So like we're, what we're talking about here, I think is prompting. And I can send you guys an email after this. There's a great guy online that has like these, he's got like a list of prompts. Oh, that's cool. And, yeah, they're like, so if you prompt and you train ChatGPT on, you know, all of the um, F-stops, the kind of camera you want it to use, um, you know, you train it on all, say you want to do an image for mid-journey. You train ChatGPT on all of the styles that you would like it to, to, to be able to choose from. And then you ask ChatGPT to create a description based on, the settings that you've programmed. And after you do that, you hit render me that, and it generates this response. You take that response, put it over into mid-journey as an imagine prompt, and then it creates these ultra-realistic images. And it's just wild to me that, you know, learning this process, it's like you're communicating and you wonder, like, what am I communicating with? You know, it's So it's, it's crazy, doing, like, storyboarding but, for you. It's, it's pretty much... Laying it out for yeah. you when you don't necessarily know, even know what it looks like. It tells you what it looks like. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could be I'm, like, yeah, I want, you know, I want Gary V's voice. Like, do me, write me a speech in like a combination okay, of bro. Joe Rogan okay, and bro. Gary bro, voice. Bro, I got a story yeah. for you. It's called uh. I Make Money. Okay, you do wine sales and then you go, bro. You just bro it out, bro. Yeah, that's my Gary V. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I'm gonna buy the New York Jets one day. Um, uh, we gotta go, but please send us that email. We'll have to have you back on uh, because I, I in yeah. that last part, that's exactly what we like on the show. Like, did you know about this thing with this thing? 
yeah. that we, we don't know about, most people don't know about. That's awesome. Um, we like to, we like to yeah, be resourceful sure. girthy. So girthy in there. <laughs> We're all about girthy ROI in this place, man. All right, Matt, <laughs> we'll have to have you back on. I'll, I'll send the booking link and uh, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, stay in touch, guys. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, it. For sure.